Full body tracking is one of the best ways to immerse yourself deeper into the VR experience, but it can be pretty tricky and expensive to do it. I mean, I bought some Vive trackers the other day and some base stations, and let me tell you, it cost me almost $1,000, and boy, did it hurt my pockets. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it wasn't easy on us at all, but you know, we're still trying to get back. Uh, please take it easy on us next time. My fault, pockets, but thank God for credit cards. I'm in so much debt, you literally have no idea. But thank God for credit cards. And to keep you from making the terrible financial decisions I made, this video will show you all the options you have available to you when it comes to FBT, full body tracking. And after that, we'll take time to talk about the future of full body tracking. Now, as of today, there are three main ways to do full body tracking at home for the average consumer. Laser tracking, sensor tracking, and camera tracking. For the first two I'm going to mention, you're going to need at least one base station, but really two if you want them to work properly. At number one, we have the Vive trackers, which are great, and they're still the number one way to do full body tracking at home. That is if we're talking the Vive 3.0s. There are the Vive 2.0s, but they're out of date and ugly and old and buggy and old and, and old. So we've left them to die. No offense to anything out there that's old, you know, shouts out to Morgan Freeman, but the price for three Vive 3.0s is the same as watching Squidward stub his toes, which no matter how you cut it up, is still hard to do. And at number two, we have the Tundra trackers. Brr. Get it? Cold? Tundra? It's a tundra, it's a, it's a pun, do you get it? These trackers are just a water drop cheaper than Vive trackers, so when it comes to pricing, there's not much of a difference. But when it comes to setup, there are a few improvements. For one, you don't need multiple USBs like you do for the USB port gluttonous, ravenous beast that is the Vive trackers. Oh gosh, let me... Okay, one dongle for Tundra trackers can connect up to seven Tundra trackers at once. And Tundra trackers weigh less and are smaller in size. Always remember, less is more people, unless you're in the bedroom, and then maybe I don't know. Tundra trackers also support a slightly longer battery life at about eight to nine hours, whereas Vive only gets up to seven to eight. Tundra trackers are still typically not as good at tracking as Vive trackers are, so you still gotta put them under the 3.0s. At number three, we have a fan favorite, but a tough cookie, slime trackers. These bad boys are hard to set up, tough to maintain, and almost impossible to get right now. But they are well beloved by the community because they're open source. Meaning, you can build them from scratch for cheaper than buying them pre-made, and you can modify them to your liking. They also use IMUs instead of laser tracking, like the Tundra and the Vive trackers. So you don't need base stations or need to be in the line of sight of anything in order to get tracking. All you need is to calibrate them within relation to each other, and the tracking will work, if you do it right. And that's the biggest problem. You see, they're quite difficult to get started and even harder to maintain. They also still have a good amount of bugs that still need to be ironed out. So because of all of these reasons, most VR enthusiasts stay away from them. But they do have great battery life coming in at about 15 hours of playtime. So if you appreciate that the most, then maybe it's worth for you. And now we have the Haritara X. <sighs> it's not racist. Come on, I just rock with Japanese culture and Naruto. This is just how they would say it, that's the accent. They're very similar to the slime trackers, but they're a lot more of a finished product. They also don't need to be in the line of sight of any base station or camera, but they also are not the easiest to set up and maintain either, but they are much more doable than the slime trackers. Oh, and I'd like to mention that these are pretty portable since they don't need anything more than your laptop and your VR headset. So if you want to do full body tracking in places other than your house, you wouldn't need to bring anything other than what you have with you, which is the Harvey Tora X. They're available to buy now at $270, which is much cheaper than the Vive and the Brrrr trackers. But the hard tours still don't seem to be that good over time, so the Tundra and the Vive are still winning. Now on to camera tracking. Connect, PSI, and just webcams in general can all be used for full body tracking in VR. All you need is some type of software to do so, the most famous software right now being Driver 4. This is by far the cheapest alternative when it comes to full body tracking, and would you believe that it's not hard to set up and it's very easy to maintain actually? Unlike my girlfriend. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am now single. <laughs> bad jokes lead to bad breakups. I'm the living proof. Like I was saying, this is by far the cheapest method, but it is very limiting. You need to be constantly facing your camera, or you can lose tracking pretty easily, or just by getting out of frame or moving too much. 
And when it does work for tracking, it could be pretty laggy. So these are things to keep in mind, but it's a nice free way to get started. And I do recommend it to those who have the time. Now remember, it's up to you to figure out what you'll be using to twerk with when you get into VR using full body tracking. But these are the options today. But hold on, Chuck. What about tomorrow? Well, that's a great question. Let's take some time to look into the future of full body tracking as we see it right now. Meta is working on being able to have full body tracking with no trackers, just a headset. Sony just made this cool new project called the Mocha P, which is like the Haritora X and the slime trackers, but smaller and lighter and more portable and can be used outside and on the go for mixed VR purposes as well. There's also full body estimated movement and hand tracking that are looking like they're on the cusp of mass adoption and much more, but overall, things are looking pretty good for full body tracking. <laughs> but not as good as me with a haircut. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Subscribe and have a great day. Peace.